I'm always excited when I review something and come out of it thinking there's really not much reason to get anything else. Now, that might be a bit of a spoiler for this review, but keep watching to find out why I'm so enthusiastic about the JDS Element 4. Brought to you by Headphones.com. If you like reviews and content like this and want to see more of it, hit the subscribe button down below and consider Headphones.com for your next audio purchase, where you can buy with confidence thanks to the full 365 day return policy. The GDS Element 4 is the latest in the Element line, and it's not just a slightly more powerful amp or slightly better sound, it brings some killer new features that make it, in my opinion, one of the best options for a desktop combo under $1,000. Starting with the physical build of the device, I think the word sleek is probably the most apt description. A full metal chassis with the headphone output nestled in the front center of the device, and at the rear, a pair of RCA outputs if you're wanting to use this as a standalone DAC. And of course on top, the excellently smooth control knob that serves to provide both volume control and menu navigation. The volume control itself is done digitally in half decibel steps, giving you quite fine volume control and perfect channel matching the whole way down too, and when you turn it up past 0 dB or unity gain, it automatically switches the headphone output from low gain to high gain, and this means that until you actually need to switch to high gain, it's going to keep you in the higher signal to noise ratio low gain setting right up until you actually need to bump it up, which is great. In terms of a desktop device, I think this looks fantastic. Just the right blend of stylish but subtle, it's not flashy with its aesthetics, and it's small and compact enough that it'll blend in very nicely with just about any desk setup. But it's not just looks, it feels great to use too. When you're turning the knob to adjust volume, there's a really satisfying level of resistance, and when you press it, the clickiness as well is just... It feels really nice to use. It's not just aesthetics. The overall construction of this is excellent, and there's really nothing that I could find to complain about. The only thing that I would say maybe could do with being changed is just to add a remote, so that if you were using this as a standalone DAC and preamp for some speakers or monitors, for instance, you don't need to get up to adjust the volume. Would have been nice to see a remote, but as a desk unit where you are going to be in reach of the controls, Absolutely fantastic. For inputs, you can either go with USB-C or you can go for optical SPDIF. So no coaxial, no AES, no I2S, but those two inputs should suit the vast majority of users' needs. The one slight caveat that I would mention is that the Element 4 is slightly susceptible to USB source noise. When connecting it directly to my PC, there was some extra noise pickup and a very slight performance degradation in some areas, though it was really minor and most of it was outside the audible band. So it's not really a problem them, but if you're wanting to make sure you're getting the absolute most out of this device, I would recommend going for a USB isolator, which, speaking of that, JDS themselves recently put out the Synapse USB isolator. And thanks to some help from my friend Pete at Double Helix Cables and Daniel from Intona, I've been able to actually properly measure the noise at the output of this isolator, and it's absolutely excellent. It's drastically quieter than connecting to a phone or a PC, it's quieter than streamers like the Eversolo DMP A6, and it gets really close to the performance of the Intona 7055-C, but where the Intona costs nearly as much as the Element 4 itself, the Synapse starts at under $50, so it's quite a bit more accessible, and if you were wanting to add this to an Element 4, it's only a 10% price bump. Most of my testing with the Element 4 was done whilst using a USB isolator, so I just wanted to make that clear. The menu provides some customization options for things such as the operation of the control knob, DAC oversampling filters, but it also allows you to tweak the ESS harmonic distortion compensation settings, which I'd recommend leaving both of those at the default. The factory settings were already pretty close to optimal. I was able to get a slight improvement by tweaking and measuring on the audio precision at the same time, but if you go too far in either direction with either of these settings, you will make things worse. And Unless you have an audio analyzer on your desk, you are just going to be guessing. So don't change those. What you can change though is the DPLL jitter rejection setting. This changes the bandwidth of the PLL on the DAC chip, and lower means that it won't be able to lock to as wide a range of signals, but the ones that it can lock to, you will get better jitter performance at the output of the DAC. The stock setting was 7, but I was able to get quite an improvement in jitter by turning that down to 1. If you turn it down too far, you may not be able to lock, so you might just not get any audio out, or it might be intermittent. If that happens, bump it back up one again, but turn that down as far as it will go and still give you a reliable connection, and that will actually give you an improvement in jitter performance. So that is one setting I would recommend changing. And in terms of what headphones you can actually run on the Element 4, the answer is pretty much everything. This can be turned up all the way, without clipping, even on quite low impedance loads, meaning the gain structure in the Element 4 has been done properly, and it delivers about 3 watts into 32 ohms, which 
is plenty for basically all headphones besides one or two edge case exceptions. Go and have a look at our video on do I need an amp to know how much power you actually need because a lot of people drastically overestimate how much power their headphones need. If you're looking for full objective measurement data on the Element 4, that is available at headphones.com via the link in the description. But a brief summary is that the Element 4 performs very well both as a DAC and as a combo DAC and amp and it's quite load independent, meaning it doesn't struggle at all when you're pulling more current with demanding planars for instance. So it's powerful. Objectively, it's great in just about all aspects. It fits beautifully and subtly into nearly any desk setup, but why is this different to various other good products on the market? Well, the big new feature with the Element 4 is EQ. EQ is a fantastic way to correct the response of your headphones or just tweak them to taste. If you want to add a bit of a bass shell, for example, you can do that. If you want to correct a treble peak, you can do that. But normally the ways to do EQ on a computer are either a bit convoluted and daunting to set up or have some drawbacks like forcing you to go through the Windows audio mixer, potentially being resampled in the process, or for the really good options like Rune, you've got to pay. But with the Element 4, you can go bit perfect from any player into the DAC, and then the EQ processing is done after that inside the device itself. And all the settings are accessible via a web panel. The UI here is done really well. It makes it really easy to make and adjust changes, to see what your changes are going to do, and you can save, load, and share profiles quite easily, making it super simple to adjust the response of your headphones as desired, and to keep and swap between multiple different profiles. The user interface also makes things so much easier than trying to configure EQ on the device itself like you would do with an RME ADI 2 for example, and in my opinion the UI is much nicer than what you get with EQ APO on Windows. It's not perfect and there are some slight quirks, like for instance the fact that when you turn off a single EQ band, it doesn't just disable that band, it actually sets the gain of it to zero, meaning you can't then easily AB the change with a single band turning on and off because if you turn it off, you then have to set the gain back to what it was before rather than just clicking to turn it back on. Hopefully that's something that they can change with a few future firmware update. And the second quote that I've noticed is that there's two options for gain control in the EQ configurator, because when you apply a bass boost, for example, you have to lower the overall volume level to make sure that that adjustment is not going to cause things to clip. There's an automatic option on by default, which means it will automatically adjust the volume level to ensure that none of the changes you've done are going to cause the device to clip, or you can set it to manual, which means you can adjust the headroom yourself. If you use manual though, and you don't put enough headroom in, sometimes the output of the device will just be completely garbled, not just clipped, but sounding like it's underwater. Easy answer generally there, unless you are comparing profiles, is just stick it to auto and you're fine. So build and feature wise, this is awesome. It'll run just about any headphones you need, looks and feels great to use, built-in EQ, and it's also really good for IEMs. Signal to noise ratio at 50 millivolts for very sensitive headphones like IEMs was also really good and putting it close to the very best you can get, giving it a little bit more dynamic range than you'd get on something like a Chord Mojo 2, for example. The device also has a 0.2 ohm output impedance, so it's not going to affect the frequency response of your headphones or IEMs. And on top of that, the digital volume control means that you get absolutely perfect channel balance at all levels, so you won't get that imbalance that you get with low volume levels on many amps using potentiometer volume control, which can be quite frustrating for IEM users. So the combination of the volume control, the low output impedance, and the high SNR for small signals means that for IEM users in particular, this is a really ideal device. But how does it actually sound? Well, overall, the Element 4 is a very neutral sounding DAC and amp combo. It's got a very slight hint of warmth to it, and I think the amp that I would compare this closest to would probably be the Synxa SA1. That's the one that is most familiar in terms of sound signature to this device. The Element 4 has a little bit more body to it and a bit more of a full sounding presentation than what you get on most topping amplifiers around the same price, for example, but it's noticeably more neutral than a Hyperman EF400 or a shit Asgard. Detail retrieval on this is very, very good. The treble rides a really nice balance between being incisive and sharp, but but not being overly aggressive or falling prone to sibilance and glariness like some other products can do. And thanks to having both really low crosstalk and excellent jitter performance as well, with the DPLL setting changed, the spatial presentation and sense of soundstage on the Element 4 is excellent too. There is just a small hint of sweetness to the upper end of the treble that means you don't get quite the same level of unrestricted airiness that you might get on a full stack for example, but 
that's obviously quite a different price point. There are upgrades to be had from this if you are willing to spend quite a bit more, but you do have to spend quite a bit more. Probably the next genuine step up from this is going to be something like an Eversolo DAX Z8 and a Synxor SA1. That combination would be an upgrade, but it's going to be two and a half times the cost of this. For under a thousand dollars, I can't think of anything that is a real upgrade from what you get here. And the subjective performance, the objective performance, and the fact that this has some features not found on products even at much higher prices really does leave me wondering why would you get anything else? The two main drawbacks to the Element 4 are simply the fact that it is slightly susceptible to USB source noise. So if you are planning to connect this directly to a beefy gaming PC, for example, I would probably look at getting a USB isolator to go along with it, which given as the JDS Synapse, JDS's own isolator, is really, really good objectively speaking and comes in at just 10% extra when you're looking at the cost of an Element 4, it's not really too much of an ask to just add one of those to the cart as well. And then the second issue, or not really an issue, but thing that people might complain about, is that this is a single-ended only device. There are no balanced outputs for the DAC and no balanced outputs for the headphones, but balanced audio mostly really matters when you're needing the noise rejection benefits of XLR going between a DAC and an amp. If you're just going internally in a device like this, which has demonstrably extremely low noise, it doesn't matter. And for headphones, the main benefit of balanced is just that there's more power if you need it, which this has 3 watts at 32 ohms, and as explained in our Do I Need an Amp video, that is plenty for basically everything. You really do not need more than that unless you've got one of a few very specific headphones. Overall, I think JDS has done a fantastic job. From build to features to objective and subjective performance, this device checks all the boxes. I do wish that the USB noise immunity was a little bit better, but that's a very minor concern, and some of the minor complaints I had about the otherwise great UI for EQ can easily be addressed with later software updates. If you're in the market for a desktop source for headphones, right now, under $1,000, the Element 4 is the one to beat. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you've got any questions about amps, DAX, or music, or gear, or anything else at all, come and say hey in the Headphones.com Discord server, or the Headphones.com forum, where I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavor to help. I'm Golden Sound, you're watching The Headphone Show by Headphones.com. I'll see you next time.